Hello, this is Eugene Blanchard, and uh, this is an introduction to the network controller that's used in Packet Tracer. Uh, one of the very first things you want to do is you want to set up your network. So I've got a, a, a sample network running here. I've got two routers. I've got uh, six switches. They're just running as layer two switches, nothing special, just to get some devices out there. Uh, on this side is 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. On this side is 172.16.0.0 slash 16 network. Uh, no VLANs, just VLAN 1. And that. Very first thing you want to verify that your network can work. So I've gone from PC0 and from PC0 I've pinged all the devices here. I made sure I could uh, ping them. Uh, something else that I've done is, uh, let's bring this over here, is I'll ping uh, 102, verify the network works. And uh, uh, so I've got some simple routing. A default route from here says go to this guy. Default route from here goes to this guy. So that way we can have our routing through here. Um, when you're using switches in layer two, uh, they're not going to be aware of, they're not going to have any routing in it. So what you have to do is basically use the IP default gateway command and say on this network it would go to uh, 172.16.1.1. .1 .1. uh, this is the IP address of this guy. Um, what I like to do is uh, on my network, uh, I put all the IP addresses in. So on this server, 192.168.1.254, this is .3.2.4, 102, 101. So that way I can quickly look at the network, find out where devices are. Uh, this network is actually 172.16.1. That's what I'm using for all of here. But it's subnetted as uh, slash 16. In between, I've got a slash 30 point to point network, so it's 10.10.10.1 uh, .10 .10 and 10.10.10.2. .10 so you have to verify that yes, you can ping every device and respond back, right? Uh, the other thing is you have to have set up SSH. Uh, we're going to use SSH version 2, that's the, the version that's required. Our user name is going to be Cisco, our password is Cisco123. I want to make a note here, is don't use simple passwords if you're a teacher. Don't let your students get into the habit of using simple passwords like Cisco123 or password uh, exclamation mark. And that it gets into bad habits, then they'll think that, oh, it's okay to use that. Well, in school, it must be okay in industry. Uh, there's been times when I've seen people hook up servers to the internet, directly to the internet with the password, password, right? So, and uh, it gets into the, get in the habit of uh, using strong passwords. Just uh, how do you set up uh, SSH? This is the same for routers and switches. Uh, so configuring SSH, uh, IP domain name, and they give it a domain name. I had uh, telsate.ca was a domain that I had registered for a while. I let it expire when I retired. You set up your crypto key to generate a RSA key. Uh, it's going to ask you how many bits to use. Uh, use 2048. Then you set up the SSH server, version 2. Uh, at the same time, you might as well set up your passwords. Enable password Cisco123. I'm using Cisco123 just for this demonstration. I don't recommend uh, allowing that as acceptable in a lab environment with students. Or this one that says password exclamation mark, as if nobody knows what that one is, right? So again, use strong passwords. If you're an instructor, don't accept uh, configurations that have weak passwords. I, I, when I was a teacher, I just walked away and said, nope, not acceptable, redo it. Uh, set up your line council password. Uh, then we get to the virtual terminal where we want to run SSH protocol. So we say line VTY04, transport input SSH. Login local. Login local means the local username that we're going to set up. So we set up a username, in my case, Cisco, password, Cisco123. Then what you have to do is verify that you can SSH into everything. So basically we go to our PC0, that's the admin one I'm using. I go down to the Telnet SSH client. And on the other side of the network, I'll use this guy again. So we set up his IP address, 172.16.1.4. Uh, the username was Cisco with a capital C. We connect up. So far, so good. That means SSH is running here. We verified that the uh, password works, Cisco123, and we're in. I can do an enable. Again, we have another password, Cisco123. We're in, and now we can show version. So the version of the iOS we're running is 16. 
very important and I will show you why. Um, if you think that you can run the network controller with an existing packet tracer um, exercise that you've done before, most likely it will not work. It needs, from what I can tell, version 16 of software, which is interesting because this is the latest version of packet tracer at the time, version 8. And if I take a look at my equipment here, if I go to uh, uh, routers, uh, they have a 2811 router, which is very common. So if I bring up the 2811 router and I take a look at the command line here, and what we'll see is it's running version 12.1. So 12.1, this router that comes with a, a packet tracer version 8 will not work with the network controller. I've hooked it up. It does not work. I've gone over to the server here, and on the server I can take a look at the services, I can take a look at TFTP. Under TFTP, uh, you can update your router to version 15. I've updated my router to version 15, TFTP in, copied in that, and it still didn't work. So basically what we'll find is that uh, uh, these older routers do not work. Uh, when we take a look at the switches, and these are gotchas that are going to... I originally used a 3560 switch, and the network controller doesn't recognize it because it is version 12.2, right? So we'll find out that uh, um, there's only certain equipment that will work in Packet Tracer, and it has to be, sounds like version 16, uh, which means you, you'd use the router 4331, and the 3650 switch. I haven't checked the other stuff here, but uh, so far it seems that only these two devices do it. So if I look at the routers here, uh, we have the 4331, maybe the 4321, and then we'd have to see what other ones are supported. And that. So those are the two gotchas that I got uh, when I first started using it. I was trying to figure out why doesn't it work with network controller work with my older packet tracer uh, exercises that I put together. And then I was kind of playing around with it and saying, well, maybe if I upgrade the uh, iOS, it would work. And it didn't. It has to be, from what I found, version 16. So let's bring up the uh, network controller. Network controller is right here. So I'm going to pop it over here. I'm going to give it an IP address of 172.16.1.254. And then I'm going to hook it up to my switch. I'm going to open it up, configure it for the IP address. So default gateway on my network is 172.16.1.1. Uh, and this, this uh, message comes up because it has two gigabit uh, interfaces on here. So it's going to take the fastest port. We can ignore that. I'll go to my gigabit zero. That's the port I hooked up. I'll give it an IP address, 172.16.1.254 and go with the default mask and then I'll verify that I can ping it. I'm going to take a look over here and basically I'll ping it and so we can ping it from what I call the admin PC. So we know that the controller is working. Okay, So I have the network controller working. Uh, the network controller does not have an interface on its own. What you have to do is connect through a web browser. So I'll bring up my web browser. I'll put in 172.16 1.254 and now I'm connecting up to it. Uh, first time you connect it, it's going to register a new account. We're going to call it admin and we'll give it a password Cisco123 again Cisco123 and we'll set it up. Now it asks you to log in with the new account admin Cisco123 and I've logged in. So let's make this as big as we can get here. Um, Just resizing the window. And so what we see is we're now going to configure it, right? So percentage, it has information here, percentage of hosts can be reached by paying uh, managed state, uh, QoS, hosts, network devices. So we're going to go to network devices. And network devices, uh, right now there's nothing. We haven't configured anything. First thing we want to do is set up our credentials. And we're going to set up credentials. Um, the new credential will be Username is 
Cisco. And this is the one for SSH. Uh, Cisco123 is our SSH username, password. Enable password, Cisco123. And the description, we'll call it the Telsate network. And we say OK. So we have our credential set. Now we're going to do is discovery. And what we're going to do is create a discovery. Uh, the name of this will be for the uh, Telsate network. And what we're going to do is use an IP address. So the IP address you want to use is the, the device, Cisco device that's closest to your network controller. So this guy is uh, 172.16.1.4. One seven two dot sixteen one dot four, and the credential list is the one we did, which is a Telsate network credential, and then we'll add. And now it's going to go in discovery mode, and this is going to take a little while here, um, as it goes through and right. If we click on it, what we can see, so I clicked on Telsate network. What it's going to do is start listing the devices it's found, right, and if they're reachable. If you were using a switch or a router that uh, was not version 16, it might say reachable, or it might say unreachable, or it might say that it's uh, or it's unmanaged, right? So it looks like we've got uh, one, two. We still have a few more to go. We have uh, a couple more PCs to go and uh, some servers. So if we look at our network devices here, it's listed all the network devices that we found. Right. If we go back to the dashboard, it says that uh, percent as a host can be reached by ping. Right. Um, we have our network devices. I can I can actually now take a look at them. So I'll take a look at uh, the switch. Uh, so this is switch on the 172 network, and it has happens to be switch 5, right? And it tells us what version of operating system on is 16. Uh, if you had a network that didn't have version 16, most of this would be blank, and there's nothing you could really do with it. You'd say, yeah, there's something there. Uh, what we can always do is go through here and update uh, some information, right? Toxic connect network device IP addresses, etc. So I'm going to cancel this. And now let's do something interesting. So we'll click over here, we'll go to assurance, and we can take a look at the topology. And what it did is it figured out the topology for us. Right? So I can spread it out, and this is basically the topology that we had on our network. Uh, when we go to the hosts, what happens is that it will show all the hosts and it will also indicate what port they're hooked up and what network uh, what network device it's hooked up to. So we, we got a, a good idea of how this network. Uh, let's see what happens. We go here. This gives us more information on this on uh, the device and that's kind of nice. Um, we can do a path trace, right? So I'll do a path trace. I'll say from 192.168.1.101, which is my amend computer, to 192 or 172.16.1.254, which is the uh, network controller. And now we'll run it, and it's completed. And it basically says that it goes from PC0 into a switch, into router 1, into router 2, into another switch and into here. Right. Uh, we can do some policies. What we're going to do is give it a scope and the scope will give it telsate underscore DHCP. We're going to add that. Uh, really important, you can't allow, you're not allowed spaces or dashes, it has to be an underscore. Right. Um, 
policy, we'll say it's business relative. We'll, the protocol, we'll say it's DHCP. The scope, we'll say here. And we'll give it a, a policy name, uh, DHCP underscore policy. And we'll add that. So once we have our uh, Telsate DHCP and our DHCP policy set up, what we can do is apply this to devices. So I can select the network device and I'm going to say uh, switch 172.15. I'm going to apply this policy. And let's apply this DHCP policy. Here we go. So what it's done is applied the policy to this. Uh, what you can also do is if you edit the scope, what, what happens is that you can add more than one switch in. So originally I just had the multi-layer switch 5. You can go down here and menu and you can just start adding more devices and then you can apply it. Then you have a, a list here that says, you know, for Telsate DHCP is you have multi-layer switch, all of the switches and the IPI addresses. Uh, now, something else you can do is go to network settings, and in network settings, you can add things like, uh, let's take an example of DNS. So DNS, I'll say telsate new.ca, so I have a new telsate one IP address of 192.168.1.254. And I'll save this. I can go to NTP, I put the NTP server is 1.254. Two five four. That's the server that's on the one nine two one six eight network. I can also do a syslog server, and each one of these, as you enter them, you can save it. You can go syslog, save it, and when you're happy, you can push the config. Right. So if you've not saved, just a reminder. So I'm going to say OK, and it should have been pushed. So I'll turn this off, and uh, this is the server that I was directing everything to is one nine two one six eight one dot two five four. So let's take a look at our multi-layer switch. And we'll go into our config, our sorry, command line, and enables Cisco 123, do a show run. And if we do a show run, what we'll see is our domain name has changed to Telsate new. Our IP name server has been added, 192.168.1.254. Um, I think the syslog server is at the, at the end here. NTP server we set. And that um, I don't see the syslog server. With the uh, network controller, one of the things that we can do is also create scripts. We can have the API doc documents. So right now I'm on the PC looking at the web browser, and this gives you the API and, and the uh, routines that you can use to build your scripts. Um, what I'll do is I'll put in a link. Um, this is uh, a link from the developers of uh, Packet Tracer. They had a, uh, a little webinar that they put on that talked about how you can use these scripts. That's a little bit beyond me. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope that this has been helpful.